Please join Michael Voris on July 15th through 17th for a second annual weekend retreat in Bloomington, Indiana at the grounds of the Franciscan Friars of Immaculate. The retreat's theme will be the Church Triumphant and we'll discuss the current crisis in the church as well as our response in charity and boldness. Please click on the link for registration details and information. God bless. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Are you ready for persecution? Are you ready to be marginalized, intimidated, lose your job, fined, imprisoned, tortured, or killed for the faith? Well, it's something you really need to start considering and thinking about. Seriously, legal abortion is the law of the land, already well entrenched. It's not going away. Keep fighting, sure enough, because those babies deserve to have someone speak for them because the truth is the truth after all. But don't be deluded that abortion is going away. It's not. Now enter legalized homosexual marriage. The push is only in its early stages, but the juggernaut that is the homosexual rights movement is well established, well financed, well connected politically, and will soon achieve its primary goal, full equality with heterosexuality in the eyes of the law. Once that happens, it will be impossible for the church to function as she needs to in society. There is no way the church is going to be able to conduct business as usual with the understanding that homosexuality is a constitutionally guaranteed right which allows for marriage, adoption, etc. It's being classed as a civil right and when that process is complete, to oppose that in any form will be viewed as a violation of civil rights with all the ensuing power of the state leveled against the perpetrators. This is why the shocking lack of fight put up against the homosexual marriage push in New York by that state's Catholic bishops was so utterly breathtaking. Even the liberals and homosexualists were left stunned by the absolute abdication by Arch Archbishop Timothy Dolan of New York, the president of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, no less, and his brother bishops. No rallies, no mass protests called for, no storming the state capitol, no marches for marriage, nothing, absolutely nothing. A few statements trying not to be offensive or hurt anyone's feelings, and then expressions of disappointment and sadness after the fact that the state had actually passed it. Archbishop Dolan and the other bishops of New York will go down as mustering one of the weakest defenses of one of the most important teachings of the church in a very long time. This continual inability to recognize and respond to these crisis moments has become a hallmark of the church in America, which has an inglorious history of accommodating the culture at the expense of the truth. When it came to contraception, Cardinal Cushing in Boston folded like a house of cards in the 1960s. When it came to abortion, Cardinal Bernadine in Chicago just utterly capitulated in the 1970s. And now when it comes to homosexuality and all its ancillary evils like marriage, adoption, military service, propagandizing of children, Archbishop Timothy Dolan follows suit and caves. In fact, he never even mentioned the moral earthquake that had just occurred up the Hudson River two days earlier in his Sunday homily. And when cornered by reporters after Mass in St. Patrick's Cathedral, he actually apologized to homosexual activists in case he might have hurt their feelings. In one sense, though, you can't blame specific individuals for everything. These men have subordinates who are not faithful to church teaching. They either discount it, ignore it, or actually preach against it. These subordinates, and they are all over the country and the world, we might add, are allowed to occupy positions of authority and influence in the church. These subordinates have added to the corruption and moral decay of the church in a thousand ways and a hundred methods. They have contributed mightily to a diseased and corrupt situation within the institutional church, which many bishops now have just inherited. Nonetheless, without a massive reorientation and bold, decisive strikes by the local bishop in huge numbers of dioceses, nothing is going to change. Too many simply no longer see the church as the sole bulwark against evil that it is. They have themselves steered the church off course 
or allowed it to be steered off course by their subordinates, whose theme song may as well be, Don't Rock the Boat, maybe. They refuse to take the decisive steps that need to be taken, except against those who are insisting that they take decisive steps. They are driving the church into the ground, allowing her enemies to rejoice over her. They also fail to grasp, or at least articulate in any meaningful manner for the laity to grasp, that there is a gigantic leviathan of evil poised to render the church utterly and completely devoid of existence. This leviathan wants the church made into a convert of the neo-paganism of our day, which brings us back to the issue of persecution. When the emperor, the Roman emperor Decius, in the year 250, ordered that every single person in the empire offer incense to the gods or die, huge numbers of Catholics, including priests and bishops, became apostates. The call then was to renounce the teaching of the church with regard specifically to our blessed Lord's divinity. Many knocked each, over, knocked each other over, racing to the pagan altars to offer their incense and abandon Christ. Still others resisted for a short while before eventually becoming apostates themselves. All of this happened because the living of the faith had grown so lax among the clergy and consequently the laity. The ground was well prepared for the apostasy because of lackluster leadership and an unwillingness on the part of the faithful to actually live the faith to the high standard demanded. First, the faith was greatly eroded, then came the persecution. But don't take our word for it. Cardinal Raymond Burke has been saying this for a few years now. An article in which he talks about this is linked right over here. We highly suggest you read it and consider it very carefully. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. Please help us keep delivering these kinds of messages that so desperately need to be heard and acted on. Join RealCatholicTV.com today as a premium subscriber. Become immersed in the faith established by Jesus Christ. The Catholic Church is the only hope against evil because that is its God-given mission. As our Lord said, apart from me, you can do nothing. Join RealCatholicTV.com today as a premium subscriber and come to learn and love Christ more deeply.